Welcome to the solution video for Factorial. Now Factorial is known as one of those classic recursive algorithms to tackle. So if you were able to do this, then that's fantastic because that shows that you understand the basics of simple recursion and then you can take this concept and apply it to more abstract, more complex topics and algorithms. So uh, if you haven't done the challenge, please go ahead and do it. You will get so much more out of this video. Now, assuming that you have done the challenge, I want to actually go ahead and dig into my thought process for building this up. It might be very similar to the process that you use, and I want to take the diagrams that I draw and the concepts that I apply, eventually turn that into pseudocode, and then code at the end to show how it works. And I will simplify and show you a, a pretty cool way that this function ends up looking. So uh, let's actually jump into the code first, and we'll see what the prompt is actually all about. So it says here, write a function that returns the factorial of a number, which if you recall from math class is the number itself with an exclamation point. That exclamation point, also called a bang in programming, uh, is the factorial symbol. And so we would take that four and then notice that we would decrement that number each pass of the factorial multiplication. And we're repeating this behavior of multiplying. So this is a great example of when recursion should come to mind, is saying, look, I have uh, this behavior that's repeating over and over, kind of like a loop, I can go ahead and implement recursion to solve this. Notice also that we have a very clear stopping point, which is the number one. So one is starting to look here like a pretty good base case for us to tackle. And then we see that we have an output to test against. So when we run our function factorial of four, we should see that the output is 24. That's how we know it works. So the input data type and output data type will both be numbers. Let's jump into the diagram and see what's uh, coming up with this process of finding out this algorithm might look like. OK, so we have four factorial which is the equivalent of that number, our initial input, times that number minus one, times that number minus one again, times that number minus one again, uh, and this should ultimately equal 24. So we notice a few things right off the bat, that this number right here is our initial input. This is that uh, input that when we first call the function, uh, it's what we eventually want the factorial of. We also notice that right here we have a very clear base case. And so we somehow need to get all the way from 4 to 1. And when we get there, we want to have this product built up uh, right here, 24. And that is the number that we want to return. This is the product to be returned when we hit the base case. And so as you can see, we can't just jump from four to one. We actually do need to go ahead and touch on the numbers uh, three and two. And we make these mini jumps by just subtracting one on each call. So it's really sort of two main operations, two things going on. One is that we are decrementing. In other words, we are just subtracting one from the input. And the second thing is that we are multiplying. So we somehow need to figure out how to decrement this value and multiply to build up a product in a way that gives us 24 for an input of four. So I'm going to propose that we structure this just as we structured our repeater solution, which is, uh, in that case, we had a counter or a length that was tracking our base case. In this case, the number input that we use will eventually be so small that it will also be the counter that stops the recursion, right? We don't need another counter or some length property. For this, we just use the number input, and by decrementing that to one, we reach a base case. So we know our base case, we know how to get there. And now, what about this product that we're building up? Where should we put that? How should we handle that? Well, 
we should probably go ahead and store this product as a second parameter, okay? So uh, because we don't wanna have anything global, no side effects, uh, we could have for our initial inputs, for our initial inputs, we could have num, which is what the user is inserting, but then this product that we're gonna build up over time. And we're gonna go ahead and update this product with each call. So at first the product probably should start out at a number like one, right? Uh, not zero, because anything times zero would be zero. But it, with one, when we multiply it by four, it becomes four. If we then multiply it by three, it becomes 12. And so we probably want some products starting at one right here and then uh, the way we change those right underneath, I'll write how we change those, is uh, the number is going to become num minus one. These are sort of the uh, new or updated inputs for the next recursive call. Uh, and then the product is probably going to be multiplied by the previous number, right? Because when we have four, we want to multiply by that. We want to use it before decrementing it. So this will probably be product times num. And so with this strategy, this seems like it should work. Let's go ahead and try to implement it. So quick pseudocode is the base case is when num is one, return the product. Uh, and that means that we're gonna wanna add this other parameter, default it to one. And then we're gonna want to um, multiply the product and the number to make a new product into new product. Uh, we're also gonna want to decrement the number input. And then finally, we make our recursive call with the updated uh, inputs, and that's it. So the base case here is going to be if, right? It's this conditional statement. Uh, if we look at what we have drawn out, it's if we're saying maybe it's when num is one is when we want to return the product because at that point it will be built up. And then here we're saying let's multiply the product and the number into a new product. So I'll write a new variable for this called new product and this will be the product that was passed in on this call times the number that was passed in on this call. Uh, and then same thing with the decrement, I'm gonna assign a new variable called new num, and this is going to become the uh, number that we had just passed in minus one. So with these inputs, if we go ahead and return uh, the call to factorial with the new number and the new product, then this should give us the factorial that we desire. Uh, so if we run through it with, uh, let's just test out really quickly, factorial of four, then we see, in fact, that we have 24 as the output. So we could, of course, clean this up. We could go ahead and simply insert this in right here. Uh, since these variables are only really being used in one place and they're just placeholders, we could go ahead and stick them straight into that next call. And right here, we see that in just two lines of code, we get the exact same output. We could even go ahead and turn this into a one-liner with an arrow function if we like, but I will leave that to you, uh, the viewer, to ultimately do if you so please using a uh, tertiary, ternary, tertiary, ternary operator. That would be the word. Uh, so that is factorial in a nutshell. This keeps the code pure. There's no side effects for this function and uh, it's a very elegant way. One little tricky thing you might wanna think about, well, what if the user puts in a negative number or a non-number? You can handle that, and you'll often see the factorial written with this uh, num equals zero in case the user puts a zero. Mathematically, zero factorial is one, and this would give you that one. So minor tweak uh, with math, but all in all, this is the solution. So hope you enjoyed factorial, and I'll see you in the final recursion video.